How did one face this opponent? Just like he'd faced all of his other opponents. You just stepped into the ring. You put on your gloves and you remembered everything you'd ever done. You had faith in all you'd done leading up to this point. And then you stepped into the ring, into the unknown, into the fight. You didn't know how it was going to turn out. You didn't know what you're going to do. You didn't know if you're going to win. You just stepped in. You walked forward. You looked at the ref. You looked at the crowd. You saw the red ropes. You felt the spring of the floor beneath your feet. You looked at your opponent, moved your mouthpiece around, clenched your teeth against it. You tapped gloves, and then you went back to your corner, and then you heard the ding of the bell, and then it all began. You came forward, you watched, you moved, you trusted. He'd been able to do all of that. He knew all of that. He'd done it all of his life, but he didn't know how to do this. Sitting in his car outside the hospital, a rental car, a Camry, a new one, feeling that knot in his throat, feeling his belly contracting and his breath coming short, just thinking of it, thinking of going in there, thinking of his pop, his pop his eyes watering, his breath, his breath, holding his breath, realizing he was holding his breath and opening his mouth and breathing in. We all had to face it at some point, losing his mom when he was young and now losing his pop, a tear breaking free and rolling down his cheek. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, hindsight was 2020. There was no way that he could have known, not that it would be this soon, this soon. More tears breaking free and rolling away, coming down both sides of his cheeks, looking around, the champ crying in his car. <clears throat> there was nothing but the parking lot around him, other cars, one woman walking, pushing a stroller. Life began and life came to an end. For all of us, eventually, we were all going to face it, would have to face it, losing those that we loved, losing this life that we loved, saying goodbye the tender spot in his chest, the opponent which could never be defeated, the one who took us all down eventually, knocked us down to the ground, not to get up again. How much time did his pop have? Not much time. It could happen at any moment, at any moment. That's what the doctor said. And here Taba was, hesitating. Hospitals, what was it about hospitals that they had that terrible smell? Pushing the button for the elevator, feeling like he could just start crying again if he let himself. Keeping his head hung, wanting to be strong for his pop, but feeling some panic, some terror, like he didn't know what life would be like without him, without his pop. That Dean letting him know the elevator had arrived, looking up some, a moment passing, then the doors opening. People coming out, looking away, lest they recognize him. Turning his head slightly to the right, waiting for the people to come off, looking at the wall and at the plant there, and then moving in, pushing the button for the 12th floor, the ICU, intensive care unit, the doors closing and then someone putting their hand in so that the doors open back up again, a doctor, a young doctor, in his scrubs, seeing Tabo and looking away and then looking back, that recognition there and Tabo looking down. Hey, aren't you? the young doctor asked. Tabo just wanted to cry, looking at the floor and swallowing, his vision a little blurry. Yeah, he said, and nodded his head, a tear rolling out. He couldn't hide it. Why hide it? He looked up and made eye contact with the doctor, <clears throat> the young doctor. He just looked at him directly, like he'd look at someone in the ring, like he'd look at his opponent in the ring, just gave him that flat, straight, even stare, just looking at him like, even if he was afraid of him, this other guy, even if he was intimidated by him, that wasn't going to stop him from looking, wasn't going to stop him from stepping into the ring, stepping into the fight. Just that even straight, flat-eyed look. The doctor seeing it there, Tabo's sadness. I'm sorry, the young doctor said. Tabo nodded his head, softening, feeling himself softening. He pointed towards the buttons on the wall of the elevator next to the door. You gonna push a button? I'm going to the 12th floor too, the young doctor said. Tabo nodded. I'm sorry about your father, the young doctor said. It was everything Tabo could do not to cry, his belly squeezing and contracting as if everything in him had frozen for a moment, something in him wanting to push it out. All things on hold, his breath held while he nodded his head and tears streamed away, 
We all knew it was coming. We all knew. Sucking in a breath, nodding his head a little more, breathing, breathing, remembering to breathe. Sniffling and breathing it is important to breathe. Thanks. Tabo made a fist, a soft fist. He made a soft fist with his left hand and punched it softly into the palm of his right hand. Sniffling and tears falling away. Eight months he'd been traveling. Eight months while he could have been with his pop. There's no way he could have known, not known that it was going to be this soon, going, going to be, that it was going to be now, now, because he wouldn't have gone, wouldn't have stayed gone, not if he'd known, not if he'd known. This, this was, this was the last, the last, the last few moments that these were going to be the last few moments that his pop was going to be here. Just 71, young, still young, not so young, but, but, but still, he wanted to think of him as young. Life, this life, Tabo said, managing to get the words out, sniffling, a strand of snot dripping away from his nose. He wiped it away with his thumb. The young doctor nodded. How could he be a doctor? He looks so young. What are you, like 23? The elevator ding, letting them know they were arriving. 28, the doctor said, the young doctor, just finished my residency, as if that explained it. The elevator came to a stop, the doors opened. It's natural to grieve, the young doctor said. Tabo nodded. The young doctor is holding the door, <clears throat> his hand out. <clears throat> I'll show you to the room if you'd like, he said, to your father's room.